Hello and welcome to Versus Live. I'm Ross Merriam. And I'm Jorian Ballmeister. And we've got Rob in the booth. Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Rob will be taking all of your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can see them and send his favorites over to us. We are wrapping up our second day exploring new standard with cards from Call Time. Preview season officially underway. Yes, and as yes, Corey yes. said before the break, we are playing, I think, our favorite decks. Oh, yeah. In this last match. Oh, yeah. Uh, Corey on a Jeskai Blink deck, mainly Azorius, just mm -hmm. flashing for Showdown of the Scalds, which we seem to be powerful with Yorian. Yep. We also got Nico and Allrun's Epiphany, cards that were in your first deck, but we both agree better in this shell. Much better. And Nico yep. was very impressive, even in the, the weaker shell, so yep. definitely high expectations right now for that card. I think this, uh, what got worse in this deck is the shards. I don't think I'm going to be using the shards very much at all. You know, I'm definitely going to be using this mostly for uh, the other abilities. Yeah. yeah. And, it, mm -hmm. you know, if I manage to deal with your stuff early and you're low on resources, yeah. then the shards will come in. Exactly. Yep. Uh, and you'll, it'll be nice to have that option. Agreed. You're also playing All Run himself. Yes. Uh, to combo with these blink effects, you can actually play Haka early, blink it, and it always comes in as the front half. So you can get All Run into play sort of sneakily that way. Yeah, you can just have like a 6-6 six, six on the on turn three. Yeah, you with know? Charming Prince. Like depending on what, on the draw or on the play. And then the ability happens. So, you know, it doesn't work in such a way that you get to Charming Prince it out, then get um, the ability on the other side. Yeah, because um, it doesn't come in until the end step and then the ability won't trigger. Exactly. You so still have a very large creature yeah. that costs five mana, so they can't Skyclave Apparition it. They yes. can't eliminate it. They yes. can't, you know, uh, Elspeth's Nightmare it. Yeah. So, yeah. No, you know, not a lot of cards that are answering that. Really just Heartless Act again. So yeah. that's another sign that maybe Heartless Act stock is, is continuing to go up. Yeah, I think it's going to be sweet. I, yeah. Even if this deck is bad, it is for sure going to be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> on, uh, on my side, I'm going to be playing a little Rakdos mid-range, yeah. supplemented uh, primarily by Valky. This is a card I like quite a bit. Yeah. You know, the front side, you know, you can t take a reasonable creature out of your opponent's hand, copy it. I imagine this was a uh, targeted to deal with Uros that should have been in standard at the <laughs> yes, time. Yes, yes. Because this card would have been insane against that. Yeah. Just turn two, exile your Uro, turn three, copy it, attack you. Ross even messaged me while we yeah. were planning the show. He's like, make sure to try to play this up against a Neuro deck. I was like, that card is banned. He's like, okay then, that's probably for the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was good. It was so, good. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I honestly might be trying this card in modern for that reason. Okay. And also because when you cascade into it off of Bloodbird Elf, you can cast Tybalt. Yeah. Because that's how magic works, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, or is it, was there any good three mana cascades that weren't just like living end stuff? You know, I know there's the no. plus one, plus oh, green, yeah, red, really one, just the living end thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, this is you know, a, I think a really powerful card, even without yeah. just taking Uro. Obviously, I would love to take something like Croxa. Yeah, uh, but you know, the it's going to be relevant early, relevant late. I love that about it. I'm also playing uh, three copies of Varagoth Blood Sky Sire. Okay. Uh, you know, to set up, just set up my draws mm -hmm. here. A good way to use extra mana that I have lying around. The Rakdos deck is very good at just using its mana, playing long games. Yep. I can't wait for the first time I set up, uh, like, find a Croxa, mill it with a Mire Triton or a Timurat so I can make sure I have the Croxa in the graveyard. Yes. Uh, and then what is probably the most important card Blight Step Pathway, because the Rakdos deck's mana is notoriously poor. Yeah. So gaining an extra dual land, excellent to make uh, have you hit your colors on time. Also means I don't have to play as many temples, so I don't have all these tapped lands. Yeah. I know what card that um, that card combos with. What? That new enchantment that just got spoiled. Search for something busted, put it on top, cast it for free. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> we did it. All we need that's, is that's this green-black all-color uh, combo deck, and and it's on uh, cataclysmic or catacombs or whatever. The one that adds five with the Golos land. That's not standard, is it? Cascading cataracts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Oh god, dang it! Dang I do it. believe it is historic legal, right? So you yeah, got, there you we got go. That going we got a me. very, very bad historic deck brewing. <laughs> <laughs> we are ready for the historic show. All right, Rob, but we're also ready for a historic question from our historic audience. Just calling them all old? Jeez. <laughs> all right, uh, so a new card that was just previewed by Numot. Oh! Uh, it is a Senate card. Oh, um, great. <laughs> Coma Cosmos Serpent. You don't even have to read it. It's yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be very good. I, we can just all... Yeah, let's just end the show now. We know it's going to be good. <laughs> is it just me or does everybody else like clench up when we hear Simic <laughs> yeah, yeah. card? It's like, no. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, so it's three green, green, blue, blue. Okay, I like six, this. For a 6-6 six, six legendary creature serpent. 
Okay. Uh, this spell can't be countered. At Obviously. the beginning of each upkeep, Drastic create a 3-3 three, three blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. Token is, is that there. token legendary? Uh, no. Let him finish. Okay. <laughs> uh, sacrifice another serpent. Choose one. Tap target permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. Or Coma Cosmos Serpent gains indestructible until end of turn. It's each upkeep it makes yeah, a... Yeah, each upkeep makes a 3-3. Three, three. Okay, one thing I do love about that is it's a control um, mirror breaker. You know, yeah. there's always been those cards, like Nezahal was one for a little bit. And so, I like those hosers, you know, um, that you can kind of plan for control mirrors instead of just always being, you know, uh, Shark Typhoon kind of games and stuff. Maybe yeah. maybe that's not Some, the biggest Something that deal, you can but... try to set up to resolve that the is going to dominate the, the battlefield. Okay. That card's not going to dominate standard. That's fine. Yeah. That's actually a cool card. Yeah, it might be like a two of uh, in a, you know, in some kind of control deck sideboard. Yeah. Or I, a control I can mirror. see a ramp deck yeah. ramping into that and Ugin, right, as his payoffs yeah. if we have some good ramp cards. Yeah, um, seems spicy. Okay. But you okay. know what else is going to be spicier? This match. I'm excited for this oh, deck. Oh, so wait. I figured, out, I figured out how we're playing the planner bridge thing. Oh, how are we doing it? There's a card called the World Tree. Okay. It's a land. Yeah. Enters the battlefield tap. Taps that a green. As long as you control six or more lands, lands you control have tap, add one man of any color. And then for two of each color, tap it, sacrifice it, search your library for any number of god cards, put them onto the battlefield, and shuffle your library. Okay. All right, it's on. Well, we have another janky deck. Uh, <laughs> if you if it's put onto the battlefield, you're always going to get the front side, though. Yes, but you could any number, Ross. Yeah, so you can't get the enchantment with it. I guess that's just how you're casting the enchantment. Yeah, I mean that card still seems quite good. Yeah. I'm wondering if if it's going to see any play in in amulet at all, but I don't think so. Who cares? Let's battle this match. It's gonna be sweet because it I'm doesn't give them, it doesn't give them every type, and that's what ma that's that matters more. Yeah, true, true. Um, yeah, I will keep this. I'll keep my hand's not great, but it will passage a go. Okay, that was probably the worst possible draw. I will play this Amiria land tapped and pass to you. Worst possible draw right off the bat. Let's go. What is your worst possible draw? Uh, it's definitely based on my hand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do I try to get lucky and curve out perfectly? Or do I make sure I get to cast things next turn? Mm -hmm. To play a tap land or not to play a tap land? That is the question. I'm going to play it safe and play this tap land. Boo. Same old Rakdos deck. <laughs> Same awkward mana base. Um, okay, well, I will play the flip side of this and play Hacka. Here you go. Hacka, Hacka, Hacka. Walk up, walk up, walk up. Uh, I will play Timurant Calls the Dead. Okay. Brick. <laughs> Ross is off to a good start. <laughs> Don't have a fourth land. Okay, Build okay. three lands. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not doing too much here either with that awkward draw. Um. So. Want to attack? I'm contemplating it, uh, but not super hyped about it. <laughs> You know, I don't think I'm going to attack, but I am going to play a land and just Skyclave this. Pass to you. 2-3 blocker. Okay. I will definitely take another land. I'll go to 17. Okay. And I'm going to play a Skyclave Shade and Stomp the Apparition. Okay. Get myself a 3-3 three, three illusion and pass the turn. All right. Untap right. the draw. Um, I only have one play, so I'll skyclave that and play this Mimic Land tapped and pass to you. Attack for three. I could double block. That doesn't seem great, so I'll take it. I'll go to 17. Stomp the apparition. Okay. Got a 2 2 illusion. Okay. You're up. All right. Ooh. Um, 
Interesting. Let's go with, I'll play this. Um, I don't know what kind of removal you have. Probably not a ton. Yeah, this is tough. Um, okay. I'm gonna take this turn to go showdown. Sure. One, a two, a three, a four, and I'll pass to you. Pretty solid ones. Oh, heartless axe to Haka. Okay, I'm glad I didn't go for my other play, which involved Haka. <laughs> Attack for five. Take it. Down to 12. 12. Play Fable Passage and a Varagoth. Varagoth. Okay, I gotta give this That's one a read. Fair. That's the attack one. Yeah. If you attack, you can do this, right? Yep. Okay. All right. I will untap, draw. This goes to two. Now, I could do some things. I think I want to just play the cards I have now, even though it leaves some stuff on the table for this, but that's okay. So let's go with Glass Casket for that. Let's go Petty Theft to 3-3. Three, three. And definitely going to play a land. I'm not going to use the mana, so we'll play this and pass to you. Back for two. Ten. Scry. Okay. Bottom. Okay. Bone Crusher guy. Alrighty. You're up. All right. Draw. This goes away. Um, not the draw I wanted. But we still have a decent turn. I just hit a 2 2 off that Timur Calls the Dead. I think you'd be at like six. <laughs> yeah, that would have been good. I'd have an extra 2 2. I'd feel much better about this. That would have been good. So I'm going to Skyclave this. And then I'm going to Nico, put a counter on my Skyclave, and deal two. Your go. Now I can do the Skyclave Nico stuff. Woo, woo. <laughs> All right, this deck is such gas. This deck is such gas. And I even kept a very medium hand. Okay. Varagoth, Bone Crusher. Okay. Pass the turn. All right, draw, ew. Um, not what we wanted to draw. So, going to make a shard, make a clue. Um, oh, this is not very good for me. I guess I do have to do this then, huh? Okay, so yeah, make a clue, then uh, cast Yorian. Gonna blink out these three. So you get a three, three. Yeah, and then, and then we'll bring these back. Um, oh, I gotta play a land. Land scry, don't want another temple. Um, then this goes to three. I won't get this, so we'll hit this. Oh, yeah, they're legendary, huh? Oh, yeah. that play was even better. Okay, I didn't, really... didn't know that was going to happen. N N well, I didn't know they're legendary. Yeah. So I was like, I was just doing it because I wanted an empty casket. Uh, but then we'll take this as yeah. well and pass to you. Yeah, no, you just get every. Okay, that was busted. <laughs> that was busted. And now every single turn I can Yorian if I want to with Nico until you kill it. Meyer Triton. Yep. It's not a Croxa, huh? Nope. Okay. I go to 19. Okay. Heartless Act of Yorian. Okay. Attack Nico for four. Okay. And this has three exiled, huh? Um. Oh, that's not great. I 
think I just have to let Nico go here, giving you a 3-3. Three, three. Well, actually, yeah, that's not bad. Okay, I will block. Yeah, this does not seem... <laughs> what? This is that, that block seemed fine to fine to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad. Not as long bad. as you have a land. Uh, I don't. Or <laughs> some reasonable spells. I do have. And reasonable it's hard spells. to not have those. Have one of those things. But I don't have a land. If your hand is so... three temples, okay, then fine. I feel fine. So I have a time lock. <laughs> That's pretty sweet, right? So I have time lock. We're gonna get that. And the question is, do I want to tick up or just make a shard? I think I want to make. A shard here. Get a clue. No land. On tip a draw. Now we have still no land, which is unfortunate. But we can start with this. Um Okay, it is technically a land. It's not a great one, but I will play Bertha Melitis. Get one of my probably four planes, because that seems to be uh, you know the theme I go with. You got four births, play four planes. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's, just, that's just symmetry. That's just math. Don't forget the epiphany gets exiled. I don't think it matters, but... Oh, yep, yep, yep. That makes sense. Being able to bring back time walks are not yeah. good. Okay, so I'll kill this. Then I will play the saddest Thassa deep dwelling out there. Um, and I'll pass to you. This deck is gas. This deck was already pretty good, but it wasn't, you know, perfect by any means. But Nico and the showdown give it some extra flair, I think. Attack, Nico. Block. Um. Maybe I was supposed to send both. Hold on, how much? Oh, this is just blue devotion. You need to do five. Yeah. So the. Oh wow! I didn't even think of that. So yeah, Yorin will make it able to attack, but Yorin will probably blink something. But yeah. Um. It's also indestructible, but. Pass. Okay. One tap. This is just uh, that's on an adventure, right? I thought this was. I bounced a three-three. When I played Shadow, oh, yeah. Called. Yeah, so that that's a thing. Okay, so I get an 04 wall. I drew <laughs> I drew a card. I drew a card. So I'll take up on this. Okay. I yeah, okay. With you getting the wall too, I have got to I've got to kill this. Okay. Imagine I did that on my turn. Yep, and played the fine. murderous rider. So I'm at okay. 17. Okay. And still your attack was the same. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. All right. Um now I've just got to find an answer to this Yorian, of which I have very few left. <laughs> Yeah, I think Yorian is the least of your problems right now. Um, huh? Oh yeah, sure. It's like oh, a sure, three-three. Sure, sure. It's a, it's a, it's about to die. Sure, sure, I sure. Assume. Um. Okay. So I am going to attack for one. Sixteen. Sixteen, and then I'm going to go with ECD on this. And Nico Eris. And we'll make a... I guess, why did I attack? Yeah, I don't want him to attack. I'm still at 17. Yeah, and then I'll make a shard and pass to you. Okay, I'm very dead. Okay. <laughs> I had a time lock. <laughs> I was like, did I want to cast that? Not yet. Not yet. All right, well, this looked awesome. This looked like everything. Uh, so I, I'll just say it. The, the most Corey B deck in the <laughs> human history. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, Nico yeah. and uh, Epiphany looked quite good. Uh, Rakdos deck continued to be 
awkward and clunky. Hopefully that does not continue in the later games. As it usually does. <laughs> uh, we're going to uh, take a short break here, get our sideboard set up, and then finish our final match here on Versus Live. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Versus Live, where we are sideboarding in our matchup between Rakdos Midrange and Jeskai Blink. On my side, my sideboard's not very good. I've got a copy of Agonizing Remorse. It seems fine. I'm trimming a Mire Triton for it, but that's yeah. it. Yeah, we're early in. The sideboards aren't great on either side, but I have Omen of the Sun. Ross notoriously never plays around this card, so it's the silver bullet against any Ross Merriam deck. So I'm going to bring in copy two and three. A couple shatters on the draw, even though I don't think they're very good, but that's it can be awkward against a heavy removal deck, so we're going down to two. And Brazy B is good against all the illusions I give you, but I don't think it's good enough. Yeah, the body itself is pretty bad. It's, yeah, it, it's just a two-mana bounce, a.k.a. a two-mana removal spell against illusions and your zombies, but that's pretty narrow. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, it's good against Crocs, I guess, when it's resolved, but I kind of two-for-one okay. myself, you know? Yeah. All okay. right. You got any questions for us, Rob, as we're shuffling up for a game number two? Uh, we do. We had one from earlier about uh, a card that was previewed. I don't know if you've seen yet. Cosmos okay. Charger is three and a blue for a horse spirit 3-3. Three, three. Uh, flash flying. Foretelling cards from your hand costs one less and can be done on any player's turn, and you can foretell it for two and a blue. So it costs one less to foretell to put down? No, so it, 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 its ability makes your other foretells cheaper. So once it's in play, you foretell for one mana and at instant speed. Oh, okay. A little ghost horse action. That seems pretty good. And it's a 3-3 three, three Flying Flash for four? Yeah. Yeah, that seems perfectly fine. Yeah. No, that, that seems like a, a nice pair with uh, the busted four drop that we were playing in round one. Yeah, it does not let you behold the multiverse for three mana immediately, though. Because you can't go, as we learned, you can't go foretell cast immediately. But can't you cast it on your opponent's turn? Uh, so, yeah, you can foretell for one on your turn and yeah. then cast over two on their turn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, it seems, it seems decent. And four yeah. mana, so it doesn't get glass casketed. Gets apparitioned and scorching dragon fire. Doesn't like, get eliminated. And what do you know? Heartless Act is good again. I think Heartless Act stock is going to go up. You yeah. Know? Uh, All right. So yeah, that 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 card seems solid. And it's a flying ghost horse, which just sounds pretty cool. You know. I'll, I'll be interested to see if there's a, some other really good uh, pushed uh, foretell cards. cards. Yeah. Because when I'm flat, when I'm playing an instant speed a lot, I'm not sure how much I want the time walk. But if your opponent taps out and you go like end of turn foretell, untap, yeah. play it for five mana. You know, yeah, I'm just starting to see some mana. maybe like mono blue uh, control. I don't think you can really do tempo, but the, the pieces are kind of forming there for blue X control. Who knows what yet, but yeah. I'll be looking into that one. Yeah, it seems like a Ross Merriam card. So again, I've got a good hand that needs to draw some lands. I'm going to keep. Yeah, I'm going to keep. My hand's just good. I will play an Agadim Tapped. Okay. All right. That was a good land that I wanted. So I will play a Triumph and pass to you. Uh, now I will go to 17 for a Shatter Skull. Play a Mire Triton. Go to 19. Okay. Land, land. <laughs> Middle two spells. I'm a genius. Yep, you're smart. You're up. Okay, um, let's go with just the white side of the pathway here, and I will play a Haka. Your turn. Back for two. Um, I think I care for this. No, I'll take it. Mm. 18. Well, she says Haka. Haka's dead. That's the turn. Oh, yeah. All right. I will Nico kill that. Your go. Giving me some Teferi vibes. Except that okay. I Drew another Agadim. We can play that tapped. Okay. I'm going to stomp this Nico. Rude. You're up. Rude. Okay. That was not a good draw. I'm going to play a very sad Skyclave Apparition and play a land. Pass to you. Sad Skyclave. Um. Okay, so now Hacka is not technically in the graveyard. That is yes. kind of nice. Because you bring that back with ECD. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I will play Timurit Calls the Dead. Okay. 
Mill a Valky in two lands. Exile this other Timur it calls the dead. Get a Justin Parnell zombie. Justin's back. Pass the turn. All right. A draw. Um. Okay, I'm gonna go with Pathway and ECD this. Pass to you. Pathway to you. Yeah, bringing this back and then immediately getting an activation. My deck is mostly creatures, but I'm pretty spread over, so the 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 card isn't insane as far as the activation goes. Um. You have three cards in hand? Three cards. All busted. All busted. Liliana plus. Okay. We each discard? Yep. Okay. Let's go to Skyclip Shade. Pass the turn. Okay. <clears throat> Tick up, thank you. Go to Yorian, make plays. Uh, I guess I'll go with the Yorian. And I will just blink out this and then hit it. And pass to you. Uh, a land, trigger. Sky Mountain. Okay. Oh, Yorian tricks, how fun they are. You love them, right? You uh, seem to be enjoying yourself via that one game of the last run. Uh. <laughs> yeah, during the pandemic, I think you might be the person who has been the victim of a Yorian loop more than any person in real life. That's got to be true, right? Uh, 21. Okay. Actually... Well, let's not do that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to play the Skyclave Shade for two and play Varagoth. And Varagoth. Okay. Pass the turn. This is going to be a good turn for me. I'm going to tick this up. Oh, God. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Uh, let's go with the Casket of Glass. Blink that. Uh, play Charming sucks. Prince. I will attack for four. I'm at 15. I will play a Charming Prince. Blink this out. End step. This comes back. We'll get rid of these. And pass to you. You get your precious stuff for a little bit. Precious stuff. You're in loop. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. Okay. Well, I've got to change my play. Instead of setting up Croxa, let's play Meyer Trading. Okay. Go to 17. Sure. Mill two bricks. Okay. Attack with Varagoth. Varagoth, I'll take it. 16. 16, and then I will activate Varagoth. Okay. That's um, fine. I'll accept. Um, can't find this one, which I think would be the best. So I guess I'll find this one. Yeah. Okay, done? Yep. All right, end step, these come in. I'm going to put the Skyclave Apparition trigger at the far back, and I'm going to put Charming Prince at the far front, and I'm going to exile Skyclave Apparition, so that's going to be the first thing. I guess I have to choose my targets for everything first. Oh. I will target with Skyclave to this, ECD to this, Glass Casket to this, and then uh, this exiles before the ability goes on. Yep. ECD comes back, and then this will be coming back at the next end step. Then I will untap, draw, and you get no illusion because of the way you order it there. Draw, I will attack for six. Go to 11. Okay, and then second main, we'll play a land and a Thassa Deep Dwelling. Yep. Okay, end step, this comes back. Uh, this triggers, I will target this. 
blink out this, this, and this. And I know you have Crocs on top, I'm guessing. I'll blink out this too to give you this back. Yeah, you just blow up my, you just blow up everything. Yeah. Okay, I'm dead. All right. <laughs> you're in. You're in. Ooh, 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 ooh. That was a murderous rider? Yeah, being able to search for a removal spell is pretty gaff. Okay, well, I drew an answer to the Yorian, so that's okay. nice. Okay. I guess. Oh, sure. 16 to 11. Now 13. I gained two yeah. off the, tri the retype Triton trigger. Attack okay. for two. I'll take it. Brings you to 14. 14, yep. Uh, pass a turn. Okay. Uh, end step. These come back. I will Charming Prince um, the Yorian. I think that's what I would do yeah. if I didn't see that. So you still got to pay four for that. Yep. And then we will Glass Casket with this. Yeah. And then untap, draw, next chapter, attack for four. I go to nine. And I will buy Yorian. And then blink out Charming Prince to scry two. Bottom and pass to you. Uh, play Ox of Agonis. Oxy Ox. Discard this Timur, calls the dead, and draw three. Okay. And then I will play this as a red pathway. pathway. Okay. All right. I will untap, draw. I will go with which card? We'll try all right. I'll just see what it does. All right, so I'll put a counter on this. <clears throat> so it's a four four now. Yep. Um now one, two, three, four. What are you at? I am at nine. Nine, okay. So then I will you're in. I'm gonna blink out. These, you get this back. I go to eleven. Actually, I won't blink. I won't give you the Meyer okay. train. I'll just Stay blink nine. out these. Attack for six. It's not okay. <laughs> it's not okay at all. <laughs> this deck is awesome. This deck is so awesome. Okay, I Good. will jump. All right, end step, trigger to this, trigger this. I'll choose creature. So I get neither, they, they go to the bottom? Yeah, you don't have to reveal. Oh, okay. You okay. just show the ones that go to your hand. Um. So Yorian came into play, so these come back. I will blink, uh, oh, and I'll, I'll blink this with this. So I'll trigger it so these come back first. These come back, no trigger with this. Scry two with this. Put this on top, this on bottom. Then blink this resolves. I will blink out. These and pass to you. Okay, so the Thassa Thassa blinked the Charming Thassa, Prince. Thassa blinked Yorian. Charming Prince uh, came into play and blinked this though. Okay, so this is exiled as well, but they're two separate exile triggers. Okay, and this yeah. one returns immediately. So you let this one resolve first, and uh, but then if that one resolves first, then it won't be exiled with Charming Prince. You don't get to do both. Yeah, you're right. So I blink this with this. Use your nouns. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to let these come into play first. Um, scry 2, which I already did. This does nothing. In, in fact, the trigger for the for Apparition and Prince to come back onto the battlefield happens when the Thassa trigger also goes in the stacks. So you can't target either of these with Thassa. True, but I can target yes. this, and then these come into play, and then this resolves. Yeah. Them. Yeah. So do you want it? Do you exactly want the Do you want the Orion here or here? Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll keep it here. Exile these. Yeah, okay. sure. Um, yeah, I jumped. It's so much easier on Arena. They just show you what, what you're doing, you know? <laughs> and this is a 4-4. Four, four. I mean, nothing insane, but I mean, it's still a 4-4 four, four god. That's double blue. The thing about this used to not be a good Thassa Deep Dwelling deck just because it's very unreliable to attack. Like you had Brazen Bar as your double blue, but now you have two reliable double blue cards that work well with it. So I, I, I have high hopes that Thassa is even better in this deck. Okay, I was hoping Corey would leave the Orion in exile. Yeah. I have a Rankle. Okay, okay, gotcha. My Shatterfell Smashing is one short of killing both Alrind and Yorian. Yep, yep. 
<laughs> <laughs> so I think my play is to just ox and hope. It's really good. Yeah, you better have some busted oxes. I don't know what it could be. Me neither. So I'll get a mountain with this fable passage. I like that you're trying. That's all that matters. I I don't think that's true. <laughs> There's a lot of other things that matter. <laughs> you're right. Like the marbles that are going to be coming over to this side in a few sweet They're turns. already on your side. Well, they're going to be staying <laughs> on this side. I will be the Viking king, the reigning Viking king, as long as uh, possible here. Okay. Discard these two cards. Drop okay. three. Perfect. Yes. Game. <laughs> game. Game. <laughs> yeah, you're dead. What do you What do you think? You want to squeeze in a pity game, or we're getting a little close, huh? Yeah, I think we're a little bit too close. All we can right, take some right. questions from the audience. Though. Yeah, first let's talk about the cards, though. So, so I mean, I, I really do. I think this deck is, is going to be quite good. I think there's some configuration of Jeskai uh, that is going to be very good. Um, but yeah. overall, Nico very impressed, or really impressed me. Um, you know, the giant green creature really impressed me. We didn't get to see Warren Tybalt Flex. at all there, yeah, unfortunately. That, that, that's the big but... thing with this deck is that Tybalt is the card that I was most excited to see. Yeah. Probably should have just played four to draw it a ton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it would have also been very good in this matchup. Yeah. You know, tagging those Yorians from your hand. I have all creatures, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, a, a lot of different things. So, unfortunately, didn't get to see it. Varagoth did not look particularly good. It just sort of added to the deck's clunkiness. Mm -hmm. um, so, that one disappointed. Honestly, not you, too surprised there. And you just don't have a ton of mana to work with in that deck yeah. you know like i think that card would be a lot better in a green black shell where you're kind of ramping and you can just put haymakers on top you I, can have one vol um the or, six drop i, one I also think trider, you want yeah. to be playing it in green so you can combo it with vivian then you tutor for creatures and immediately cast them off the top of your deck Ooh. so you can only uh varagoth once a turn but that's still pretty nice to just make sure your vivian is or, good things. Yeah, or even like an Abzan food style instead of Doom yeah. all, just like that. So you could go for one of Charming Prince, one of Yorian, you know, yeah. like... You could find your yeah. Wicked Wolf when you need it, you exactly. know. Yeah, that, that'll... Overall, it just seems like a weak card to me, though. Like, standard, you usually don't have time to put something on top. It's not even card advantage for the ability, so that yeah. kind of scares me, but it's good flood protection. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so, and I, you know, it's a reasonable body with with the Death Touch, too. I'm not super high on the card, wanted yeah. to try it out, uh, so not su not that surprised that it disappointed, uh, but Tybalt, I do think, is quite good. You'll mm -hmm. see me continue to play that card throughout, so we'll definitely see it on versus, uh, you know, in the coming weeks. Yeah. But uh, Vorinclex looked excellent. Yes. And um, Behold the uh, Multiverse. Yep. And Nico. And Nico. Yep. Uh, th those are the three, you know, really strong cards that I've seen. I still have high hopes for this combo in this. We didn't see it. We didn't see the turn three flip this, yeah. you know, have something busted. But I think that's it, the fact that you have that as a plan. But then you also just have another, a lot of other game, you know, Baron, Skyclave on three, all this kind of stuff uh, really makes me excited for this kind of show. Yeah, I, I like that we didn't get to see Baron combo with Nico. I was hoping we would see that, mm. where you have the Baron in play, you know, Nico, one of your other creatures back to your hand, like a Skyclave Apparition, and then get yeah. to draw cards with Baron. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, this shell, Nico is just the perfect card for it. It's it the perfect card. Absurd. Yeah. I, and I really want to try to try it with i was very torn between jeskai for showdown or bant for like gilded goose visionary vivian basically that's it and just have another way to find charming prince loops and stuff like that uh, and then you still have all the same core which could be better than showdown yeah. you know so I, so that's another Nico's already providing a lot of card advantage i kind of like just getting the extra mana me too yeah, so uh, I would say that's for next Tuesday's show, but that's already too close to this. We're going to try some other spice. Yeah. I'll bring that back, though. Have yeah. no fear. <laughs> we'll, we'll loop back to that when we have the entire set. Yeah, so what do you say? Let's take all the questions you got, then we'll thank some subs and sponsors, and we'll head out of here. All right, so that's a little one from earlier that you mentioned briefly at the beginning. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on the Trickster God's heist? Like, do you think you see that being a staple? That is the Demir the, Saga. Yeah, the Demir Saga. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, realistically, I don't think it's good, um, because exchanging control of things just usually doesn't work out that well, it's, but it, it's a it, low floor, high ceiling effect, it, but, um, it does. Ooh, I just thought of something now too, though. This is spicy. Okay. So I, I found two cards that really work well with it and it already shells into an Esper Doom deck quite well. Bertha Miletus and Skyclave Apparition. If you give them Apparition and kill the Apparition, wait, they they get the token. They get the token still. So maybe that doesn't work exactly like I want. 
Depends that, on how apparition is. No, worked. that is that is how it works. Okay. If you take control of apparition and you kill it, it's whatever card. Yeah, the exiled exile. card's owner. Yeah, so they yeah. still get it. But actually, that's better because then they don't want to use a removal spell on their own creature to get a card. You know, they can block with yeah. it and then it replaces it. So that that is two cards that work decent with it. You know, birth, you get the token, play that, exchange with the love struck beast. Um, and then what was chapter two? I know chapter three was like lightning helix. Uh, chapter two, you may exchange control of two target non-basic, non-creature permanents that share a card type. So you can swap basic lands or you can swap, you know, enchantments. You Artifacts. Know. Yeah. So you could swap that enchantment for like an ECD. Well, the cool thing I think there is just straight with birth. If you birth on turn three and then cast this on turn four, you have the, the O4 wall, you exchange the wall. Then on the next turn, you order the two sagas so that the uh, Trickster's God heist resolves first, put that on top of the stack, and See, then you exchange the birth that's about to die. And then you still gain two life because the trigger is coming off, I would think. Uh, I'm not sure. But if not you can, sure, who but honestly magic, cares? Like, yeah. if, if you're taking an enchantment of theirs, like, like, can you... I don't know what exactly you would be taking that's an enchantment, yeah. but... Um, or Elspeth's Nightmare, you know, um, you yeah. check that out. So the, there, there's some stuff to do with enchantments. I'm not, like, there's not a ton else to exchange. Otherwise, you're, like, exchanging basic lands. Exchange a Bertha Melitis for a Great Henge. Oh, uh, it's an artifact. Well, the... So it's non-creature, non-basic permanent, right? So you can't exchange the wall with another artifact. Does it say non-creature? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, gotcha, so gotcha. You, you need something else, and Great Henge isn't an enchantment. So the, that, Nico, that... Nico, you get one of these other oh, enchantments too, aren't they? They're not actually artifacts. Clues are artifacts. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you could exchange Nico uh, enchantments for ECDs and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it has the possibility. Th 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 that's <laughs> it's that that's where the the it needs to sh prove it to me because yeah. I think that first ability you can set up and you can do good things with it. Yeah. But how often are you going to get good value out of that second chapter? Is my question mark for the card yeah and if you can find a situation a, 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 the right shell the right metagame you know combination yeah. of those uh factors that unlocks the potential of the second chapter yeah. then i'm interested yeah i think two decks that i'm interested in for the next show is esper doom with that and green white tokens with that six drop those are the things that are on my brain so far yeah. but yeah i'm figuring out how to use that dragon that's Ooh. definitely it. yeah that's nice okay. that's nice. uh got any more questions rob uh, that's what I got for right now. Okay. Perfect. Well, Perfect. how about some subs then? We did get one sub today. Heptagon24 subbed again for Heptagon! 11 months. Woo! Awesome. Thank Thanks, you very Phil. much. <laughs> Thank you for that support. If you would like to support Star Sea Games in another way, you can join SCG Premium. $7.99 a month will get you access to exclusive content from our excellent staff of content creators. So, uh, uh, also, some other perks, 5% yeah. off of sealed product, 10% off of singles, and 15% off of supplies. So head on over to starcitygames.com slash join dash premium and sign up today. And honestly, what better time to get premium when we have all these previews going on? You know, you can go to starcitygames.com slash preview to, you know, be able to see all the new cards that are coming out. If you're premium, you get uh, a little discount on some of those cards, so you yep. can't complain about that. And you get, you know, all these articles we're writing all yeah. about new cards coming out every single day, you know, different ways to utilize them, deck lists yeah. galore, so definitely a great time for yeah, premium. Yeah, you know Shaheen was uh, writing about the the yeah. Azorius Control Planeswalker. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm, that... <laughs> I'm sure he looked at Behold the Multiverse and was like, I'm in. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, <laughs> and so if, if you're a control player, you can find it from there. I'm sure we'll have great stuff from everybody else as well. Absolutely. You, know, you got that Christmas money burning a hole in your pocket. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know I do. I know I do. And if you want to uh, sit in style like me and Ross do every Tuesday and Thursday and sometimes Fridays, you can head over to Carnox.com slash SCG and use that affiliate link to get yourself 10% off one of these awesome gaming chairs. And our last sponsor, Coalesce Apparel. If you like the shirts that we wear, you can find their entire collection at coalesceapparel.shop. And be sure to use the gift code SCG when checking out to get 10% off of your purchase there as well. Absolutely. And don't forget, we have the final week of uh, the SCG uh, online tour um, Keldheim Championships. This one is standard, and they're going right now. It's Friday. I would say yeah. normally it's tomorrow, but you can play in these tournaments today. We got four flights to get yourself qualified today, four flights tomorrow, uh, and then the final um, online event 
for the Kel Time Championship qualifier will be on Sunday, and all of these events are standard. So if you want to play a little mono green food before we get all uh, the other stuff to mess it up, jump on in those yep. queues. Those satellites are six round events. Four mm -hmm. and two will get you into the Sunday Kel Time Championship qualifier. Each win beyond the fourth will get you a buy, up yep. to two buys if you 6-0. Uh, so good luck if you play. Uh, and see if you can sneak into that call time championship, which is sneak or which is sneaking up on us. Like yes, yeah. that's, that's in a couple weeks, right? End of, end of January. It is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. And uh, we got a sale, right? Yes, and we have the uh, CG holiday sale, fifty percent off of select singles. That is going to be going on until Monday at ten fifty nine a.m. Eastern time. So be sure to check out the website, find some singles that you like and get a good deal on them. Absolutely. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for our special Freaky Friday uh, little Kel Time event that we got you know, to it was do. No, Freaky Beats, Corey won. Yeah, right. I don't know. The marbles were there before they started. They're collecting dust over there now, Ross. So, All right, we will be back Tuesday at our normal time, 1 p.m. Eastern time, with more sweet Viking metal action. So for Corey, Ross, and Rob, see you then.